Hello, everybody. My name is Susan LaCroix. This is my wonderful daughter, Julie Davison. We are demonstrators with Stampin' Up. And we, well, we've been demonstrators with Julie next week. We'll yeah. On the year anniversary. <laughs> anyway, oh we, <laughs> we live two states apart and decided to get together and, um, and start this video series, Sunday Stamping with Susan and Julie. So we've been doing it just a bit over a year now and we're having so much fun. And we just love doing this and, and then sharing our projects with you and giving you some tips and tricks along the way and just having a ball. So Jay, how are you? I'm good. I was just thinking it's so, it's so good to connect each week because sometimes we would go a while before we, I mean, even talking, but you know, like yeah. we would go, months without stamping together and so i i just love having this opportunity to do it every week even though sometimes we record like you know two in one week and we kind of work ahead a little bit but it's still so much fun to connect like this more regularly Absolutely. i just love getting a Absolutely. chance to stamp together Thank i you. have been good it has been busy 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 um it just never slows down. <laughs> <laughs> Not with four kids. I feel like I say that every week. It's busy, busy, busy. We just got back from a little trip. Um, it was sort of just a, a short little midweek trip to um, Indiana. And actually, we stayed at the house where we did our little girls weekend uh, back in the fall. And we had booked that house for on stage as well, but they were out in the country and the Wi-Fi wasn't really great. And so it just wasn't going to work out for on stage. So we had switched the on stage weekend and we moved it to the summertime. So we did a midweek. It was Monday through Thursday. So just like literally like three nights, two full days um, and met up with Amy and her family. And so it was so nice. The kids really loved getting away and it was hotter than heck but it was still just so good to to be together and again like it was so short there's never never ever enough time never um, but cousin time is so important and oh my gosh kids, yes they they really truly do live for cousin time and I, it makes it makes my heart happy that they want to be together and you know enjoy each other so and I guess because they don't live very close together so they don't get to see each other it's like that saying absence makes yes. the heart grow fonder kind of a thing. So it's um, so true. Like, I think it would be different if we lived closer, um, but it is special. I mean, they only get to spend time with their cousins just a few times a year. Um, we try to cram in some extra visits over the summer because schedules are just a little, you know, freer um, <laughs> school and everything. And I'm hoping we can do one more cousin weekend with the kids at your house because they used to do camp every week um, at the Henry mm -hmm. Ford and Greenfield yeah. Village. And so they've all aged out of that now and yeah. they're missing that like week at your house. They all, like all of them, all six of them are just like, you know, yes. we want to, because they have little things that they do at your house and the park nearby and like, you know, all their little they fun do. things that they love to do. Sleeping and sleeping bags. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's so special. So I'm hoping we can do that before school starts. Of course, mm -hmm. the Michigan and Illinois school schedules are like not very compatible. Like <laughs> we start mm -hmm. like really the middle of August and we get done before more Memorial Day and in Michigan you guys don't start until after Labor Day and then they don't get out until like the middle of June almost and so right. in the summertime we have like six weeks or something like that of a window um between you know when they're both out of school and we don't have you know marching band and all that other stuff so, so. And yes yeah. And now that Tom and Miles have graduated you know jobs know. and you know <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Let's move on to stamping. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Well, last week we showcased uh, more of a masculine bundle with the brood for you. And I feel like we're on the opposite end of the spectrum with this week's product. So let's flip the camera around and um, reveal our featured suites. Okay. So we're using the Abigail Rose. I'm going to turn on my light here. Oh, there it is. Um, Abigail Rose, this like 
you should be introducing this sweet mom because I feel like this is you like this is, is shabby true. chic and just so pretty and detailed it is, it, <laughs> I have used this a lot it is, uh, it's my go-to suite right now you know and it's like okay move away from Abigail Rose yeah. <laughs> Oh, we have so many fantastic bundles or bundles suites, and this is one of them. So, as always, there's one item number to get the whole suite, but the suite includes the stamp set dies, designer paper, and also this fun ribbon. So, I'm going to move the catalog out of the way so I can show you. Um, here's the ribbon. It is um, it's very wide, but it's really soft. Um, I think even more so than it looks like in the catalog. To me, it looks really stiff, like almost like burlap, but it really is very, um, really soft. And I think easy to use. So we've got this designer paper. I guess I'll start there. It's a 12 by 12 designer paper, which I just cut down um, so that I can show you a little bit easier. Uh, the colors here are crumb cake, early espresso, um, some whisper white, I think a little very vanilla, and then also some petal pink um, in there. So this is like a um, spreadsheet, a ledger. Yeah, like uh, you said spreadsheet. I was thinking, to me, it reminds me of like a library card, like a log book, like that kind of thing. Um, I just love these soft florals and leaves and um, really great patterns. This one here is my favorite. I think I just love the, um, the contrast between the background with the texture and then the white flowers. And this one actually coordinates with one of the dies. So the, we have a, a great stamp set and die set. And the die, the big die coordinates with this one and lines up. Let me see if I can get that just right. There it is. Yeah. I don't know how well you can see that, but oh, I didn't realize yeah. that at first. So you can cut that out all those little pieces with the die and then use them on your product. So we've got some detailed dies, also some dies that cut out the images. Um, lots of great stuff. This is a rubber cling stamp set. Um, I love the detail on the flowers that you can color or just keep them black and white. And then we have some really great sentiments. Um, you are positively the greatest. My very favorite ever besides thinking of you is best wishes because it covers everything birthdays, retirement, weddings. Um, and then we've got some other ones. It's going to be fab, friends forever, feel better soon and happy birthday. Well, we went on that trip to Utah. We went on a little demonstrator retreat and a lot of people used the Cottage Rose bundle and the Abigail Rose suite for their swap cards. So I have a, a few of those to share. Mom and I've got the same cards. This one's from Pam McLean. She added some Wink of Stella. I don't know how well you can tell in the plastic there. This one's gorgeous. There's no name on it, so I'm not sure who made this one. And mom's got another version. We were trying to figure out if it was the same card. And it is different colors and different paper, but it's the same kind of layout. And we're pretty sure it's from the same person. So that one's really pretty with the posy embossing folder in the background. Oh, here's a beautiful layered one by Amy Combs with the petal pink in the background, some detailed die cuts in the crumb cake tag. And then, oh, this is pretty from Susie Wood, black mm -hmm. and white. So we've got the stamps in the corner and then the die cut one on the stitched square. Such a great card, but I've been using this one a little bit as well. In fact, um, we did some mystery stamping with the Jubilant Stampers. And so this was the card that I created. Um, Kim always does such a great job, my upline Kim Peck, with um, doing the mystery stamping card. So it's hard to tell, but I got a little petal pink stamped flower there in the background with the die cut over the top. And then Kim did another mystery stamping um, with the Impeccable Stampers team. And so this was the same pieces. I just assembled them in different ways. So this is the first one that I made. Um, I have a little, little wink of Stella to the center of that flower. And this is the new label punch. And then um, mom shared her project on the Zoom. And so I put my other pieces together this way. And I really love how you had put that white piece across um, the center. So I used the smoky slate with the petal pink on that one. 
One last sample, and then I'm going to switch it over to you, mom. I love casing the catalog. You guys know that. And so here's one that I cased um, from the catalog. It's right here, this sample. Um, it's going to be fab. And so I die cut with that big die, and then I put the designer paper um, underneath it. I used some Stampin' Dimensionals to add a little dimension, and I incorporated some of that ribbon um, underneath. And um, I loved this sample here in the catalog, how you could stamp on the ribbon. And mom, I think you've got some stamped to show us. I haven't I actually tried that myself yet. So let's switch the camera over so you can show us what that looks like. All right. So um, when I was working on my swap for Utah, I just kind of unspooled this and just kept stamping as I went and then I re-spooled it. So I had it all ready to go. So it's really easy to stamp on. So let me show you the sample. And I think I've showed this here before. So this was my swap for Utah. I and I just, love um, that. yeah, yeah it, I just, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I had to make like 78 of them, <laughs> but um, it, I just loved it and got some nice feedback on it too. So I like all the layers and stuff. So this is, this is probably my favorite. Now you mentioned Kim's mystery stamping. So this was my version of her mystery stamping. I used that new circle die and some of the um, early espresso and crumb cake on this. So this was my, whoop, I'm on a camera here. I love go. those colors, the crumb cake and the early espresso. Mm -hmm. And that paper is one of my favorite patterns from the Abigail Rose set. Yeah. So this is the, the, the swap that I got that is very similar to Julie's. So we, yeah, again, we think it's the same demonstrator that did it, but it's so pretty. You know, again, she's got lots of layering here and just the texture with the, the posy embossing folder. I don't know if you can see it very well on the- Yeah, and that's that Happiness Abounds stamp set with the sentiment and yes. then the rose, but that rose goes really great with the paper too. It, it does, it really truly does. All right, so let me show you what I'm going to make today. So um, let me pull all my stuff in here. So I'm starting with a piece of 11 by four and a quarter, and this is the petal pink, and I've scored it at three inches, five and a half inches, eight inches, and nine and a half inches. So I don't know if you can see that. We'll put all the measurements and the score lines in our description. Now the next piece I have is kind of the card base, which I'm using Smoky Slate five and a half by four and a quarter. And to add a little texture, I, I ran it through the stitched greenery Ooh, um, yeah. embossing um, the die. Um, but in a, then it kind of felt flimsy to me. So I trimmed it down to five and a quarter by four and we're gonna glue it onto oh, okay. it just for some stability. And then I've got some designer series paper pieces as well. So I have this one at four by two and three quarters. And then the striped at four inches by two and a quarter. And then this little little kind of faded flower, flower um, piece, four inches by one and a quarter. And then I have a piece of basic white at four inches by two and a quarter. So lots of little pieces. Again, the measurements will be in the description. So why don't we go ahead and kind of get started here. So I'm gonna just fold the card base up. And um, let's see, I want to go this way. This and way. this was a card that you oh, yeah. um, were inspired by. It was one of the swaps that we got in Utah, right? It was, absolutely. And I can't remember the name of the demonstrator. Where's my bone folder? Oh, well, pretend I have a bone folder. <laughs> Use a oh. marker. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Watch me get marker all over. Right. <laughs> oh, no. It would be my luck, right? Um, so... Yes, I can't remember her name, but um, she used the He's the Man Suite, and I can bring it out. It's pressed teal, but I can go grab it if you want to see it uh, with a different um, paper. So, all right. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my four by two and three quarter piece, and I'm going to go ahead and put that down. And I'm working backwards a little bit here. As long as I'm in camera, Julie, you'll tell me if I'm not right. Yeah. I think as long as you're on your grid paper, you're good. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this one is going to, I'm going to stamp this real quick. 
with um, multi slate. And it is, it's going to be fab. All right. We're going to add to that in a little bit, but I wanted to go ahead and get that stamped and get that on our card. All right, next is going to be our striped. And I chose to have it go vertical. This is such a great card for showing off lots of coordinating design and paper. Absolutely, absolutely. And I haven't used the Smoky Slate um, Petal Pink version at all. So I wanted to use the, these colors. So this is gonna go here. So I'm gonna leave that to just plain. Let me make sure I have this right side up. I'm gonna get ink all over this. I just know it. All right. So that piece is done. I'm going to then put this on. But actually, I'm going to use liquid glue because of all these little pieces. I want to make sure it sticks really well. My favorite adhesive. <laughs> I haven't been using it much lately. Right. I have some stampers that tell me they use it all the time and they think of you when they do. They're like, oh, I'm using your mom's favorite adhesive. <laughs> That's great. I love it. All right. So I'm going to use some tear and tape because I've got lots of layers here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I've got tons of pieces of um, dimensional packets right in my little basket. Oh, it does kind of flop over and it will kind of stick up and stuff, but it's so pretty. You're going to love this. I was just thinking you could add ribbon around the card. You did a similar card um, last month or a couple months ago where you had the ribbon tied around to hold it closed. Yep. It crossed my mind briefly. No, oh, come on. All right. So now we're going to put this on here. Nice. Coming together. So now I want to work on the design element. So I die cut. Um, oh, come on. I die cut out from the, the new um, stylish shapes. Or did I use, no, yeah, it's stylish shapes. Okay, so I am going to take some black and the leaves. Just stick it right here, bam. And then I'm going to do some blends. So I'm gonna start with the dark. This is the dark smoky slate. And just to kind of do the veins a little bit, add a little shade. I feel like I've colored these leaves so far in succulent and <laughs> all kinds. All right. over it with the light and fill it in. So rather than just kind of push some color, I'm actually coloring all of it. And to save time, I went ahead and did the flowers. So I'll bring those out in just a minute. It's so funny that you start with the dark because I usually do the opposite where I start with the light and then I add a little dark for some shading. Yeah, I mean, there's really no right or wrong way. It's just what your preference is. Mm -hmm. Claire, she's the master blender. <laughs> she just, she adds so many layers of color. She, 
she does one and then she does another and then she goes back to the first i don't remember if she starts with light or dark but she I don't either but she it goes over it several times <laughs> this is so true all right so then what i do is i i did some flowers so i was trying to decide how many flowers and i ended up just putting like one kind of right here and i could have gone up higher with my um with my um, leaves, but oh well. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw a dimensional on here. Pop this up. Right there. And I used um, I used the light, and then I put some dark in the center, and I and just just a little bit for interest. And then I decided to do the happy birthday. So I'm going to just cut this. And I debated about doing the banner cut, but I think I'm just going straight across. All right, so now we're gonna put this, oh, well, let's do this first. Oh, I've got a little ink there. So I'm gonna just stick a, um, you know what? Let me do this. I'm gonna do a little leaf. I should have done this. Dog on it. <laughs> you said I'll do some more later and I thought are you sure you want to glue it down but I didn't want to say anything <laughs> all right so I've just got a piece of card oh well you know what I'm gonna go this way just cover that up don't try this at home people no. <laughs> Well, I've done this before. I like how you're just covering up the edge so you don't get any. That's so smart. See, it looks great. You did good. Yeah. All right. So I think I'm just going to put a little guy right here. Um, just to put a little tie in the flowers. Okay. Nice. So now that she's through that piece is done. And so now I can go back to the front and glue this on. And so I'm just going to glue, put some of the adhesive right here. I'm going to be able to open my card. And then this guy is just going to go over here. Maybe I'll go down. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go down. I like it. Just a little bit on the edge to catch it. there and now let me just of course add my bling because yes so <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do maybe one over here like the elegant faceted gems yes I I can't tell you how many packages of this I've gone mm -hmm. through it just lends to shabby chic so well yeah I think those are my favorite too I think so guy up here and there it is oh that's so pretty i love the colors and all the paper yeah it's gorgeous well i do i pulled out the the swap card it was lisa miltakis okay. um and i can show it on camera if you'd like or if you have it close by you know, if you have it handy then you yeah. can show it to show uh what she did with it but um, uh, yeah, I just absolutely love this layout and I'm going to use it again, uh, like tomorrow. <laughs> it might be <laughs> it's some new paper. So, so gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jay, are you ready? Yeah. Do you have any other samples to share or is that it? Oh, I think I should, did I share? I shared them. I think so too. I just oh. wanted to double check. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's change it every year so you can see here's lisa miltakis's card she used the he's all that suite with the painted texture background um 
with the embossing folder. And then we've got the to a great guy in there. So this is from He's All That. And then this one is from the Wildlife Wonder set. But I love the juxtaposition of the two. Your card is very feminine and um, shabby chic. And this one is a little bit more masculine with the Cajun craze and early espresso and the um, Sahara sand. I actually paste her card just as she did it, except for the, the inside greeting because I don't have that stamp set. And a workshop. And oh, a wonderful. They loved it. They said, oh, we got some, you know, between Father's Day coming up and um, some birthdays in their family. They were just thrilled to get it. So, um, and I said, you've got a sneak peek of um, the card layout that I'm doing. To so, <laughs> well, anyway. I... I'm going to show you what I, what we're making, and then I'm going to show you how to make it. So I don't know what this is called. I've always just called it a fun fold card, but I was looking through some old tutorials for project playback. And this was one of them that I came across. And this was one of my first video tutorials, like literally 10 years ago. Wow. Um, and like I said, I just called it a fun fold card, but it has sort of this like, um, you know, a, accordion kind of like pop-up thing but I just love the way that turned out so it's not really that hard it's all about marking and cutting the diagonal so in my original tutorial I used the diagonal score plate on the um the stamp and score but we don't have that anymore so um this is an updated tutorial for the regular paper trimmer we're starting with a piece of cardstock that is four and a quarter by nine and three quarter inches so this is going to be our card base and i've already scored it at five and a half so that's just sort of your standard card um score but if you were to fold it you would notice that it's just a little bit shorter than the standard card well the number that you need to keep in mind for this card is half. So we're going to go half of the card width, which is four and a quarter. And half of that is two and one eighth. So I'm marking the card at two and one eighth on either side of the score line. So I'm going to mark a little notch on this side, the top and bottom, and just using a pencil. And then also two and a quarter from the score line, the opposite direction. So again, just making a little pencil marks from the side um, so that I know where that is. Now, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on camera, but I've got a mark here and I've got a mark here on either side of the score line. So now I'm going to take the scoring blade on the paper trimmer and I'm going to line up opposite corners. So I got the mark right here and the mark right here lined up in my score track. And I'm going to take the lighter blade, the scoring blade and score that. And then I'm going to do the opposite direction with the other two little marks that I made and score. Now I don't have an eraser on the pencil here, but um, you can use an eraser to erase your pencil mark if you were, um, if you made a really dark mark. So this is then the card base. We're going to fold on each of the diagonals and then kind of push in to create this, um, this top. But you'll notice that it doesn't look exactly like this. We need to trim the corners a little bit. So we're gonna make another mark again at the halfway point, which is still two and one eighth. And um, I'm gonna make that mark with the pencil. And then we're going to cut from the score edges here to that center mark. And that's just going to kind of square out our diamonds. And so you're going to do it on each side. So there's the first piece and lining those up in the score line, the second piece. And so now you have that diamond in the front. I guess you could call this like a, a pop-up diamond card. What sure, sure. Okay, well, now we need a piece for the inside. So we're gonna do a little more fancy work with our paper trimmer. This is the regular four inch by five and a quarter piece that you would normally put in a card, but obviously it's not gonna fit. We need to add a little diamond at the top. So we're going halvesies again, and we're going to mark this card at two inches because two is half of four inches. 
And so I'm just making a mark right here and then I'm gonna turn it and at two inches again, I'm going to make the marks on the sides. And now I'm going to cut from the center mark to the side mark on each side, kind of like what we did with the front flap, just cutting off those corners so that it fits inside of the card base. Again, if you have visible marks, you can just erase them. All right, I'm done with the paper trimmer. Let's put that aside and this will fit just perfectly inside our card base. So let's add that. If I were going to do some stamping, I would do that now. Um, I actually, for the front of the card, I chose the sentiment, feel better soon. And there's not really like a second sentiment that matches that in this stamp set. So um, I'm just gonna leave the inside blank so that I have room to write a message. I will add some designer paper. The bottom piece is one by four, and then the smaller piece is half inch by four. And those are just going to go on the bottom of the card I love that you'll be able to see them from the front, but also from the inside of the card as well. Okay, coming together really nicely. This square measures three inches. So the square that we're gonna layer inside is two and three quarter inches by two and three quarter inches. And we'll have all the measurements in the video description for you. I'm gonna add that with some regular glue. And I have pre-stamped and colored the cottage rose image. I just love this one. I use some sponge daubers to color petal pink and pear pizzazz on the flower and the leaf, but the flower itself is stamped in early espresso. And then I add a little wink of Stella in the center as well. Very so that's gonna go on with some stamp and dimensionals with the tag. And then the final thing is just adding a little um, linen thread there. Nice. Very pretty, Julie. Thank you. I love the way this card turned out. It's just such a fun way to add a little interest to your card doing a fun fold. And I think it's funny that we both did fun folds. We did. <laughs> cool. That always worked out that way. Let's switch the camera around and show off both our cards. Oh my goodness. I have to say, when I first saw the Abigail Rose suite, I thought of you, but I felt like it wasn't necessarily my thing. But the more that I play with it, the more that I just love these images and the soft colors in the paper, I'm definitely falling for Abigail Rose. <laughs> and you've got the sweatshirt too. Yes, I do. This is not the sweatshirt. No. <laughs> it's too hot for sweatshirts right now. But whether you're a demonstrator or a customer, you can get the Abigail Rose themed um, hoodie in the online store. There's also a poster. I haven't gotten any of the other branded merchandise yet, but there's a poster as well. I, um, I want to get it framed. Yes. Did you get it already though, mom? Uh, it's just still all rolled up in the tube. Uh, um, I feel like I don't really have a space for it in my stamp room. I, I don't have a lot of wall space, pretty much just what's behind me. Um, mm. I've got a big window and then big shelves and then it's open. Like I just realized that <laughs> half of my room is open. Um, the stairs are right there. And then the, the front door, I'm in the front of the house here. So uh, I remember when we were looking at houses and I said, this is where I want to have my stamp room. And Jim said, can you keep it clean? And I was like, <laughs> does it matter? <laughs> um, no, I do try to clean for company, but um, thankfully, the front door, the way the front door opens, it sort of blocks my room. So if we just shuttle people down uh, the little hallway, then they don't necessarily pay attention to um, my room, but <laughs> it is kind of um, in the front. So there is a little more pressure to keep it clean. <laughs> hey, do you know what we're gonna do next week, Julie? What are we doing next week? Something from the new Oh, yes. <laughs> we haven't picked it out yet, but we will do some sneak peeks from the new mini catalog. I can't believe that is just right around the corner. Um, I'm trying to remember what's today's date. Today is the 26th 
And so, yeah, just a few more days. The new catalog will start on Friday, July 1st. What the hell? Yeah. June went so fast. I cannot even believe that it is almost over. So one last reminder, if you have favorite things on the last chance list, uh, make sure to get those before they're gone because the January through June mini catalog ends on June 30th and the new July through December catalog will start on Friday, July 1st. Yes, it will. <laughs> Well, I think that wraps it up for this week, Julie. Um, we will be chatting in the next couple of days and kind of planning for some things coming up. So um, I hope you have a great week. Thank you. You too. Because <laughs> it'll be almost the 4th of July. We should almost do a patriotic card. I know. Maybe. Well, I don't know. We'll have to see. We need to take a look. I'm, I don't even remember what's in the mini catalog. I'm like, can we do patriotic with Christmas? <laughs> Red, white, and blue pumpkins. I don't know. <laughs> it, it could be inter an interesting challenge to do 4th of July with mini, <laughs> with no. mini Cadillac stuff. So now you have got to tune in and see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever we come up with, it'll be fabulous. <laughs> it always is. In the meantime, we'll see you next Sunday stamping with Susan and Julie. Bye, everybody. Thanks have for watching. Have a good week. Love you, mom. Love you too, babe.